What's going on guys, this is Peter here and you are watching my Shards of War guide, one if not the hardest of all dungeons. Like always I will start with the basics but this time I give you more tips. So first thing first, this is a free level dungeon and you can reach it either from Vlox Falls and clear your way through Arbor Bay or you can start from Gad's encampment, enter the dungeon and go backwards till you can go out and get the NPC. Sadly without the NPC certain gates will not open, so in both cases you will have to deal with enemies. I think the first version is somewhat easier, so in this guide I will present you the classic Flux Falls, Arbor Way, get the quest and complete the dungeon thing. Anyway, Shards of War is most famous for its unique stuff called the Bone Dragon stuff, but actually there are two other special skins which only drop here, the Golden Hammer and the Sun Touched stuff. By far the BDS is the most sought after of course, and if you get a Q9 for instance and with a favored attribute, easily 10 plus arm braces. Anyway, finishing the dungeon yields Azuran reputation points and the quest we need is called the Lost Souls. Alright, now the promised tips and tricks. Tip number one, if you have friends who do shards of war speed clears, ask them to do this for you. You will see this place sucks with the hero team. Why? Because it takes a long time to beat the dungeon and the boss can easily kick your ass in hard mode, but if you find a helpful person you can do the whole thing in 15 minutes or less, saving you from anxiety and an hour long grind. Tip number 2, holy damage, 98% of the mobs in this dungeon have a natural weakness to holy damage, things like ray of judgment or light of the Eldermore can do huge damage. If you have a melee character, make sure you have something which converts your damage type to holy, this way you can deal double damage to the undead creatures. Ok, my next tip is also for melee users, make sure you have either a Zuran scan or your heroes can remove blindness or you will be useless the whole time. Sadly the skeleton wizards possess several blinding skills, so this place can be super annoying for martial classes if you don't change your builds accordingly. AoE damage is very effective against the undead, I've already mentioned Roy, but you can think of E-Surge, Cry of Frustration, Mistrust, Panic, etc. These are all very effective here. You can make your and your heroes lives easier by using knockdowns, dazed conditions, uh, like, like Techno Bubble is a great skill and, and can slow down the whole group very efficiently. Ok, another tip, test your team's power before you start. If you leave from Gad's encampment, there is a group close to the portal. If you have trouble defeating them in hard mode, it's a sign to improve your heroes. Of all creatures, the skeleton wizards are the worst due to their powerful AoE spells. And if you can take them down in time, your party will be relatively safe. Another tip, don't forget to bring death penalty removal items. Sometimes you make a mistake and overgrow uh, and don't fail because of high DP. Also bring a concept, pecans, summoning stones, this can always turn the battle to your side. And of course, if you can't succeed, ask for help. Alright guys, my original plan was to present this guide from a melee character's point of view. I wanted to show you how annoying this can be, but then I changed my mind and made a build which I think is very general and hopefully widely available. So here it is, nothing unusual hopefully, like I said Techno Bubble is a great way to shut down coasters, spirits will be useful too and the Ebon Vanguard also will help to keep fools in one place and this way you can have the team even if you have a melee class. I know it sucks but just for this one time let your melee character be a Synod of Spirits Ritual instead. My heroes are somewhat different too uh, than what you see in other guides. This time I brought 3 Mesmers, uh, so I made my Raza a Mesmer actually. 2 e surge, 1 Panic. Panic is a great skill, it can shut down whole groups and it will interrupt a lot of skills. The bigger the group, the more effective Panic becomes. Of course we have a Beep Necro and an ST Ritu in the group and finally we have 2 Ray of Judgment Monks. And they are mostly damage dealers but can somewhat heal the group uh, or negate some damage, remove conditions and hexes too, so they will help out the beep necro a little bit. Alright, another tip, if you are a melee, make sure you, your char wields stuff, otherwise you must micro beep on yourself all the time. If you have it, the necro will auto use beep on you when your energy is low. Ok, I think it was enough chit chat, let's do this. So the first thing we are going to do is leave Vlox Falls. 
and we are heading south and we'll face these dragon looking creatures called crates. Good to know they possess a skill called metamorphosis and will turn into more badass form all the time. This part is quite boring, guys just don't overgrow at the island part and you'll be good. I will speed it up to keep the vid somewhat enjoyable. Finally no more crates, now talk to the crew member Chandra and enter the dungeon. Don't expect much from her, she will not help, not interact, just follow us or get stuck in spirits. And I have some Cormir vibes now, never mind. In case you need double repetition points, talk to the beacon of Drocknar. Alright, the first ended group is here, like I said, focus on the wizards. I like to start the Techno Babylon on the coasters and you will see sometimes I micro the soul twisting or two, other times I don't, this is just personal preference. If I feel like the enemy group is too strong, I will use the displacement, shelter and union followed by armor of unfeeling. You see each and every group has a mix of everything, sometimes more allies, sometimes more warriors or rangers, it's always different, there are one or two healers or protors as well. Be careful with these enchanted weapons, they are stronger than they look, the spirit of displacement is a must have or you will lose a hero or two very easily. Okay, it's time to face the first boss and actually all other bosses have the same name in this dungeon, excluding the end boss of course. So if you destroy Cursed Brigand you get the first dungeon key and I think the best way to do this is by using a flat bow or long bow, flag your heroes first and only pull the boss like I do. Cursed Brigand is a weak opponent but the patrolling groups are not, uh, I guess we went too close to them, no problem we got this. And of course don't forget the dungeon game. Now some poison traps, don't go into them, let the skeletons come to you, see how deadly Roy is, huge damage by the monk heroes. Avoid this portal, don't go through, this would take you to God's encampment and you would lose all the progress you made so far. Another enchanted group, put down the defensive spirits and let them come, don't stand in the poison. Open the gate and don't rush into these big groups, rather wait and play it like a smart person. See guys, no kill, just perfect timing. Nice, we are on level 2 now and from this point on get ready for torch and brazier works. Killing the boss will spawn the chest, open it and get the unlit torch. The first flame is not any close, but we need the torch, so don't drop it. You see that gate took head? It will open if you light all the flame braziers and then defeat the undead group after.
I uh, guess I wasn't careful enough, even though I flagged my heroes, knowing this is a big pile of monsters, I cancelled it and aggroed the whole group, so no microing the S tier 2, no flagging heroes to avoid being hit by the AOS pass, and let, let's see how it will go. Well, we survived somehow and the gate is open, but I lost most of my team and neither Norgu nor Sandra had any resurrection skills. There isn't any rest shrine nearby, so we must come back from the beginning of level 2. Yeah, it sucks, but a lesson learned. Guys, put down the defensive spirits, flag heroes and try to handle this fight better than I did. So here we are again, back from the dead. Let's continue the clearing. I microed my ST hero a couple times here because uh, I felt like these groups could become a threat with all these wizards and all. It was a walk in the park actually, like this. And luckily if you kill a group or two, the death penalty goes away quite quickly. After that I went back to grab the torch because I forget it somewhere in the big room. Then I killed this next group and went through the poison traps and down the stairs. There is a flame you can light the torch with, then light the two flame braziers in the other room and micro the ST in the meanwhile. A boss group will spawn very soon. Cursed Brigand again, destroy it, get the dungeon key, go up the stairs and keep left. This way you can skip at least one skeleton group and only one other group left on this level. I guess I could have simply run past these, but I didn't want any hero deaths at this point. Some of them had DP and all, plus the undead die fast anyway. Ok, that was level 2, let's see what level 3 is about. I'd say this level is the worst of all, not just the fact that the boss called Fendinin is here, but also the first 10 minutes sucks for several reasons. This place is crowded, we must go through narrow caverns, there are traps everywhere, we must bring this annoying torch with us, plus the undead are very easy to overgrow here. So my tip for you guys, go as slow as you can and put down the spirits in advance and best if you do the flame brazier thing after a group or two has been destroyed. I can't really give you a better tip than that, be patient, uh, don't let heroes do stupid things like stand in the poisonous parts for long and switch to a ranged weapon if you want to pull a group away from another group. Longbows or flatbows have the biggest range. Perhaps I could have saved a minute or two here, but I thought this group will cause problems later if I try to bypass them, you know, safety first. I swear this bring the torch through the whole map stuff destroys my brain cells faster than any monotonous farming, uh, never mind, uh, let's just light the next brazier. And finally we arrive at the rest shrine, then a huge room full of mixed groups. Best to put down the torch first, prequel spirits and deal with this group at the door.
We must light all the braziers in the corners. This will spawn the boss whose death will give us the dungeon key, which will open the room leading to Fendin Inn. And this is simple, isn't it? Alright, Brigand is dead. Pick up the key and clear at least that group at the dungeon lock. You see, I made a mistake here. I grow the other group with my Vanguard Assassin. Don't do this, folks. Two groups are too much for a hero team. I was able to save the day just in time, but it was close. <laughs> I hate this dungeon so bad. Don't worry, we had our revenge. It, I was like, if we die at the big boss, this group will be in our way when we come back. So let's clear the, the way first. Alright, it's done. Let's open the gate and just one more group till Fendin in. Okay, that was the last group. Now let me say a few things about Fendi. The reason he's so hard to beat uh, is the game mechanic, which works like this. You kill Fendi and the archers, you get the soul of Fendi and the damned crewman. Then you have around 30 seconds to beat the soul version of Fendi. And if you can do that, you get the chest. And if you don't, the original Fendi comes back and you must do this till the soul's HP hits zero. Luckily the soul version has no HP regen so you can destroy him even cycle after cycle. It doesn't matter how long it takes, as long as you deal damage to him, he will die eventually. Of course people have figured out several tricks and tips to make this battle more doable. Uh, let me say a few. The most common way uh, for a hero team goes like this. You destroy the archers, then you pull Fendi away, kill him, get the soul. But this way you don't have to deal with the damned crewmen, because those spawn where the archers were killed last time. Of course, once the soul is gone, the archers will come back to your location, but this is something you can always rely on. Another tip, you can pull Fendi into a flame trap. He isn't really mobile, likes to stay in one place. And if you can achieve this, your damage output will be much, much better, because the flames hurt him quite nicely. Of course you can always rely on the high ground, this is how speed clearers do it. One or two tank Fendi at the flames and the rangers spike him down from a big distance. This isn't really an option for a hero team, but I thought I would show this as well. And another tip, display your hero builds like I did and check their energy bars every now and then. Because this is going to be a non-stop fight, which can easily take over 10 minutes. And trust me, even with a beep necro, they will run out of energy sooner or later. Anyway, the usual anti-coaster tactics works well against Fendi, uh, knocking him down helps much, panic on him and on the surrounding mobs, mistrust, interrupts, these are always very useful. Alright, let's see how my team performs. So my first idea was the one that I mentioned as the most common approach, get the rangers first, then pull Fendi away, well, let's just say this didn't work for me this time. And I'm not a Shards of War expert at all, I don't know, I he always went back and then I said to myself, alright, let's see a classic fight then. So I flagged heroes as usual, put down spirits and the road. Okay, we killed the original Fendi and let's see how the soul works. Luckily, Array of Judgment just reached the crewman, this way we can focus more on the soul. Personally, I don't think it's a good idea to only focus on the soul because these crewmen have quite many OP AoE spells too. And in my opinion, best if you can mix it up and deal with both the crewman and the soul of Fendinin. See how much HP the soul has? We hardly get like 10% of the full HP. And and that was it, 30 seconds for 10%, hopefully it goes better in the next cycle. Anyway, the team is performing well, we are doing kill after kill, the hero's energy is somewhat okay, but sooner or later I will call it a day and go back to safety and regen. And now somehow the ST didn't put down any spirits, uh, maybe he was too far from the fight. Uh, so some heroes died and I call it a day and time to run back to safety.
Actually, this time we were able to pull him closer and I'm trying to pull him into the flames. And this time it worked. Now a quick flagging and we must turn on beast mode against the soul. So guys, if you can achieve this position like my heroes have now, your chances are much much better since you have the high ground, rangers will do less damage on you, plus Fendi or his friends might go into the flames. And finally after like 6 or even more cycles we killed the soul of Fendinin and now we can open the chest and I think it took me around 10 minutes to kill him and I don't say that this is easy but guys look I didn't use concepts, no pecans, no some stones, not even DP removers and nowadays these things are quite widely available so if you are having troubles with this place I say better use them. Of course no BDS this time no problem I was lucky in the past got it twice already and now let's find the NPC, there she is, stuck behind the spirit of blood song as usual. And alright, this is all I had for today, hope you like this one, if you have questions feel free to ask, please give this video a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel and good luck.